Hi, I'm Melissa Fierro, um, the Technology Integration Specialist for Kankakee School District in Kankakee, Illinois. And today we're going to be looking at the BIN QRP7501K Interactive Flat Panel Display Board. So we're going to start with the EasyWrite software, which can be located right here. When we come into the EasyWrite software, we see there's a lot of buttons down at the bottom. Okay. This is how we exit out of the software. This is the sa save button share. We're going to record the rest of what we're doing here today. So to record, we click the record button. We see up here that we are now recording. So everything else we're doing will be recorded. To share, we click the share button right here. We can email them or we can print them. To write on the board, we have our pin. We do have two different pins that we can use with our students. They have two different size styluses, a fine point, and a not fine point. We then can select the color that we want down here and the width that we want to write in. So with the fine point, we get a finer point. With the wide point, it's supposed to give us a wider point. But we can also make them bigger this way as well. Right? The bin cue board is, has 20 points of contact. So if we had 20 little kindergartners or first graders we wanted to get up here, we could. The idea isn't to have 20 students at the board. It's if you have three or four up here at the same time, their writing's not going to interfere with each other. To erase on the board is intuitive for students. We can use a flat hand. And the bigger the surface that we put on it, the bigger the eraser that we get. Okay. If you couldn't hear, I don't, you probably can, um, that sound that you're hearing is the smooth friction-free touch that is also antimicrobial, which is one of the main selling points of this board in my personal opinion, besides the fact that it just feels nice and it works in many, many environments. We have multiple colors to choose from, but more importantly, because students get used to this white, white background, and it's actually kind of glaring, we like to change the color up a little bit. And high school students actually prefer a dark background with bright light, with a bright ink on it. We're gonna go to a slightly lighter color. We're gonna add a page to do that. Right here, we click the plus sign, and it allows us to add a new clean page using the same background that we had before. As you can see here, we have several different backgrounds that we can choose from. We have manuscript paper. We have, we have trouble paper, no base, sorry. We have grid paper. We have a four quadrant paper checklist. And then we have our sports backgrounds. We have soccer, football, basketball, and everybody's favorite, softball. Oh, we think I was going to say baseball. Softball. OK? And so now our coaches can also utilize these, integrating that technology into what they're doing as well. Now we're going to go through and look at our toolbox. Inside our toolbox is where we find all of our handy dandy, wonderful, fun toys. We have our calculator. One of the nice things about the calculator is that as we write in it, it doesn't give us the answer until we hit the equal sign. Once we do that, it then gives us our answer, which is what makes this so powerful in a classroom setting. It will also do exponents. But maybe we want to change this. Well, what would happen if we change this from a factor, of, if we change the exponents and made this one a 3 and that one a 2? What would happen? Changes our problem by quite a bit. And so that's also really nice. What if we instead we subtract it? So by just drawing a line through what we're looking at, so I can even get rid of the equal sign there, okay? So what if I multiplied all of this by 2? So that's what we get with this calculator. Next in our toolbox is the shape recognition tool. 
This is nice because I don't know about you, but I've never been able to draw a perfect circle. And on the RP7501K, I can export that shape outside of my box, which is really nice because then when I grab this guy, I can move it. Come back in here, let's hit clear. I can draw a triangle then, and it sharpens up my lines. I hit export, and it moves it out. This is a selection tool. When I click the selection tool, it allows me to select it, change it, and move it. The next tool in our toolbox is the stopwatch because what teacher doesn't need a stopwatch to measure how much time it takes for something to happen, in particular, maybe release time. Coaches can also use this. Remember that we do have these boards available for coaches, so a coach could use this as well. The next tool in our toolbox is the timer. This is very important for students. They like to know how much time they have left to get something done. It does make a nice little sound when it completes. You see it can go smaller, so we can move it to a corner of the board. It lets the students know that time is up. Next is, um, this is the random number selector. Um, it looks like popsicle sticks because as teachers, that's normally what we use this for, is to select a random number of students. Okay, I want to select five, eh, we'll go four students today. And it's going to give me their number. So for, stu for teachers who number their students, one through 28, um, they can then use this tool to select those students for whatever activities it is that they're wanting that need to be randomized. Okay, so this would be one group. All right. If I wanted to select a next group, I would just hit start, and it should select four totally different random numbers. The next tool in our toolbox is the sticky notes tool. So what's nice about the sticky notes tool is that we can write in these. Okay. And here's my sticky note. So I can leave notes for my students using these. Okay. They do not resize, they do not turn, but I can also delete them once I'm done with them. This is our scoreboard, because who doesn't like to keep score of things when we're doing things? We've got this cute animation to let you know who's in the lead. Very nice. Next tool. This is our diagramming tool. This allows us to create something that then becomes the background of our slide. It does not have to be a diagram. Rather, you could put math problems on here if you wanted to. So we hit identify, firms it up nicely. We then hit export. It then becomes the background. So then when we start writing on this with our writing tool, and then when we go to erase, what we drew does not erase, which is extremely helpful and important. I'm going to add another page here. Okay. The next tool is the three panel tool. This one, um, a lot of my teachers really like this tool. And what we do with this one is up here at the top, we see the question mark. So if I click this question mark guy, I can write a question, and then I can paste to all. So it's going to show up in all three panels. So now I can have three different students come up. They can write with a different color, each one of them, and they can solve the problem independently. What's also nice is that they have to stay in their own lane, meaning they can't write over here unless they go over there to write. To erase on these, we use the circle eraser, okay, which students are familiar with. 
or we can also share these. So if we see that students are making their numbers backwards, and we want to share that for whatever reason, we can hit the Save button, and we can share this to the device and then later export it to a USB drive. One of the things that's really nice about the BenQ board is when you click right here where it says three out of three, five out of seven, who knows? This is where we were adding pages. If we click here, we can see all of the pages that we have so far running. So if we run the same class multiple times throughout the day, we can go back to the one that we need to show with our students. So one of the other nice features of the EasyWrite 5.0 software is that this camera guy, I can now frame it, select what I want. I want just the satellite. I can drag it to, to fill in whatever I want. And then I have four buttons here. X exits me out of this. That one takes me full screen. I can save the picture or I can import it directly into the EasyWrite software. And when I do that, there it is. And I can move him. I can shrink him. I can exp I can move him, I can shriek him, I can expand him, and there it is. And now, once I click off of it, I can even write on it. So this is the home page of the BenQ board. To write on this or any screen, we're going to hold two fingers down and the peace sign, peace, okay? And that brings up the easy write wheel. And so we see here we have four different colors that we can choose from. The eraser, which clears all, open up our file, take a screenshot. We're going to look at that in a little bit. And this takes us right back to our EasyWrite software. EasyWrite 5.0. Okay. So we can go home here on the board. What's nice about the bin cues is that they work independently of a device. So I'm going to come in here to my apps. I'm going to go to my browser. This is the browser that comes standard with the RP7501K board, which gives us, um, it's a Chromium browser. So it's a lightweight browser. It's the same one that's standard on most Android cell phones. And it will let us go wherever we need to go on the internet, as long as we're connected. Notice right here that it has an m.youtube.com. That means it's a mobile website. You have to remember that the BenQ boards are basically giant Android cell phones or Android tablets, which makes them very happy and very popular. There is no computer currently hooked up to Ethan the BenQ. Ethan Cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much. Currently, the BenQ board is not hooked up to a computer. It is working independently all on its own with no device making it attached to the internet, which makes it extremely convenient for with that teacher who went home sick on went home Monday night, ends up getting sick or her child gets sick, and they call in sick on Tuesday and the computer for the classroom's at home. It doesn't leave the classroom dead in the water like it used to. This device can still function independently of the teacher's computer. It can go to Google Classroom using an, a full Chrome browser because Google Classroom does not like the Chromium browser. So you have to download the full Chrome, which I haven't done to these boards yet. Here we have the buttons on the front of the board. So we have the home button, which takes us back to the home page. We have the back button, which is what's unique about Android devices compared to non-Android devices is that they have a back button. We have our settings button, which takes us into the settings for the board. And then we have our volume up and down buttons as well. We also have our remote control. The RP7501K's remote is different from the, its predecessor, the RP570K, in that it actually says freeze right on it. Okay. It also has a blank button, which does this, which gives us a blank screen. And then we press the home button again, and it should take us back to home. 
The remote control also has volume up and down buttons. Okay. Now, what's nice is if I pause this video, the pause, and I want the students to notice the blue shoes. So I can circle here using the easy right. Look at those blue shoes. When I exit out of the easy right, that disappears. So I can even draw on the screen when the video is playing as well. All this is is like a transparency layer that we've placed over top of the screen. It's not sticking to the screen. It's not sticking to the video. To get rid of it, I just click the easy button and it goes away. When we are on the BinQ board, we can go to the Chromium browser and pull up the images that we're wanting. So in this particular case, we're wanting to get an image of the Ring of Fire for our lesson on volcanoes and earthquakes we've got coming up. So we're looking at all our images. When we pull them up, we want to click on them as well. And once we click on them, we want them to come in all the way and make sure that they're crisp and clear. We don't want them to be fuzzy. All right, because if they're fuzzy now, they're going to be fuzzy later, and fuzzy images are, well, fuzzy. So we've decided that we like this image. There's several things that we can do. One of them that we can do is hold one finger down on the image as such, and then we can save the image. We can just view the image, which could give us a bigger view of it. We can set it as our wallpaper, which means it would be the wallpaper on the home page. We can share it, or we can select the text on the image. In this case, we want to just view the image. So this gives us a better view of the image. And remember, pinch and zoom do work. So we can move this around on our screen like we want. We can pinch and zoom. One of the other nice features of the L1K board is that we can now take a screenshot of this and import it directly into our EasyWrite software. So that way we can write on it, our students can write on it, and we can manipulate this as we need to. So let's look at what that looks like. Okay, To do that, we're going to click the camera button right here. So we click that camera button. We see that it comes in full screen. I only want this right here. So notice I took, my two, fing I took two fingers on both sides, and I covered what I wanted on the board. You know what? I want just a little bit more of Japan here and a little bit more of South America. I want to make sure I'm getting that entire ring of fire there. I have four options. I have the X to exit out of this. I changed my mind. I don't want it. That one there, with it shows the four corners, takes me back to a full screen. This one will save it, so that way I can use the image for later. And this is the one that we were just talking about, where it's going to take it directly into the EasyWrite 5.0 software for us. And there it is. Now. In order to manipulate it, I need to make sure that I'm on the selection tool. That's the arrow with the dots. And now I can move it. I can make it bigger. Remember, this image wasn't fuzzy. Imagine if we picked a fuzzy one. I can even shrink it down a little bit more. OK, we can find the right size. And now we can have students come up and using the writing tool, they can write on it. What is that? So now we can ask questions. Students can come up. They can manipulate. They can move it. We can also erase what we wrote okay. using other things right here. What's going on with this guy right here? He's in the middle. So these are where your conversations can start happening. We can use this device the way it was intended as an instructional tool in our classrooms. More importantly, I would rather see students coming up and pointing out the discrepancies in this ring of fire. Students love using the BINQ boards, and we don't have to worry about them damaging them. It's hard. It's not going to break. Hi. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, reach out to BINQ Tech Support. They're always there to help.